This is Brawl Stars new ranked game mode, and I'm going to be playing it for the next seven days to see how high of a rank I can get. Making it to Masters would be nice, but I don't think that's going to be possible in the first seven days, so we'll have to see. One of the new features is that solo queues and team queues are now combined into one. So I was able to team up and play ranked with my friends, and I joined up with Corey, who just so happened to be live streaming and managed to leak the room code. Grassy Teapot? This is our guy. We're playing the new ranked mode, and we got Grassy Teapot on our team. So that was the squad. Me, Corey, and Grassy Teapot. We were ready to put it all on the line in the pursuit of endless glory. Our first game brings an interesting twist. We get one of the three brand new modifiers, Big Friend. It makes it so all the brawlers on your team have equal HP to the highest HP brawler on your team. And naturally, I made a stellar pick. I'm picking Sponge Frank and we're gonna absolutely destroy these guys. Unfortunately, I get caught making a silly mistake. Wait, you, oh, they're indestructible walls. Oh my God, they look so similar to the, um, which is undeniably hilarious, but thankfully we're just playing bots and it's not that big a deal. But if I'm making mistakes like this at higher ranks, it can cost me wins and we are not gonna have any chance of success here if that's happening. After that, we played two more games in which both of them had the timed detonation modifier. It just makes it so all of the walls and all the obstacles get destroyed throughout the match and it makes it wide open. We win both in a dominant fashion and then something awful happens. The matchmaking just <laughs> breaks. We tried resetting and queuing over and over and over again with no success. Someone in the stream then tells us that playing solo actually works, so that's what we had to do. I managed to get into a game, smoke my opponents, and rank up to bronze two. Nice, bronze two, baby, I leveled up. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Oh my God, I'm just better. Ooh. Oh, wait, hold on, Corey, I got a rank drop. No, I got a player icon. All right. Ranking up is great, but I was forced to continue my journey all alone. I played another match and was introduced to the third and final and happened to be the most OP modifier, quick fire. It makes it so that if you shoot anything, you get ammo back and shooting anything includes the heist vault. So if you could close your eyes and imagine a cult standing there wide open, no enemies in sight, blasting away, shooting at the vault with unlimited ammo. That's what this match looked like. Yeah, I, I picked Colt because I'm on bridge too far and I, I was spamming and not running out of ammo. I thought I was cheating, bro. And of course, the fun couldn't last forever because right after that, I struggled to find a game, even by myself. And after 20 minutes of waiting, I finally got one. Oh, I got a game. I swear. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. No, he disconnected. Oh, oh I got a game. I got a game. I got a game. I got a game. Let's go, baby. Come on. Are you kidding me? I'm going to lose my mind, bro. As you could imagine, I was losing my mind and it was only day one. Eventually, the matchmaking stopped putting me into a game altogether and everything was broken. Everyone was struggling to play the game. Nothing can be done about it. Let the devs cook. They'll fix it. And I moved on to day two. So I really needed to kick things up a notch on day two, which I was able to do by dunking on these guys in my bronze three rank up match. How many of you guys want to die? Apparently everyone. 13 and oh, uh, my teammates didn't even do anything. They're just drooling on their phones, but <laughs> all right, there we go. That levels me up to bronze three. I'm hoping for something good. I don't know what these drops can give you, but I know that that's not good. After that, I learned that I might be the best Frank in the world. I mean, the streets are saying I'm the best Frank in the world, and that might actually just stand true. I mean, Jesus. I thought the modifiers were gonna be kind of dumb, and like, I feel like they're kind of fun. It's a breath of fresh air, and I, so far, I think I'm a fan. After another few matches that were relatively easy, and then being scammed by the game, I need 20 points? I was actually now just one win away from promoting to silver one. There we go. That win promotes us to silver one, baby. Let's go. I, I can't in good faith use a silver profile banner. It's just not going to happen. With the promotion to silver, I was hoping to find some better competition and the game honestly delivered. He's just going, you know, he doesn't care. He's just going to run at the opponents the whole time. We're actually in a close match here. It's coming down. Edgar's got hypercharge. Okay, 19 to 20. We need one kill. No! 
Nice. Okay. Wow, that was actually a close game. So, so maybe Silver does have some more competition. And it wasn't too long after that where I encountered another tough challenge. Naturally, I picked Edgar because with his hypercharge, he's seemingly unkillable. Unfortunately, I failed to acknowledge the time detonation modifier being active in this match. Edgar wasn't my brightest pick, but that didn't matter because everything came down to a base race. Losing is never fun, but I only lost 14 points, and so that's really not that bad. As I was progressing through Silver, I noticed that players actually draft according to the modifier. Like this guy taking B in a map with a time detonation modifier, it's just, it makes sense, and it's small, simple, fundamental stuff like this that can set you apart from your opponents. Anyway, I was swagging on my opponents, literally just toying with my food. He's dead. Let's go, man. They don't know who they're dealing with today. I'm a legend. Or is the game toying with me? I don't know who's in control anymore. No way. No way. I'm one point away from ranking up, right? I'm getting trolled. Obviously, going into my next match, I knew that I just needed one more point to promote. I was so close to the rank drop that I could taste it, and there wasn't anyone in this game who could stop me. Okay, these guys actually feel like they know how to play the game. It's kind of weird. Nice! Okay, come on, man. Let's go. We win this, we promote. That's it. Simple as that. I earned myself a promotion to Silver 2, thus securing another ranked drop and another chance at getting the Dynamite skin. Okay, come on. I want the Dynamite skin. Please give me the Dynamite skin. After that, I took my frustration out on any opponent in my path. And along the way, I learned that playing Piper in any match with the Time Detonation modifier is extremely fun. I'm him! Oh my god, I'm him! So later, pal. <laughs> I was going crazy and I haven't lost a match since the one unfortunate loss that I incurred earlier. So after going on a bit of a win streak, I found myself in a great situation. Okay, well, I mean, it's been a journey, but one more win, that'll promote me to silver three. When in doubt, you pick Jesse, you win the game. I mean, it really is that simple, guys, okay? That's my simple trick. That's my hack. Nice, oh my god. All right, let's go, man. Okay, that win brings me to silver three. Please, please give me the dynamite skin. I just want to flex, please. That's not, that's not the dynamite skin. If you guys didn't know, that's not what it looks like. So at this point, I took a brief second to tally up my total win loss record. And it came out to be, and I'm not even joking, 24 and one. When it comes to bronze and silver, it's safe to say that I'm a demon and that one loss was a fluke, okay? Something else I noticed when I was looking back at the recordings is that I was playing Piper a lot. Maybe eight out of 10 games I played Piper, but who can blame me when I'm able to carry like this? And so after spamming Piper for a few matches, I was one win away from promoting to gold. I got the time detonation modifier and you already know I picked Piper. But my heart sank when I saw the name of one of my opponents. Oh my God, we're playing a guy named Fruity Patootie, bro. It's over, bro, it's over. Jokes aside, this game was actually really close despite me not dying a single time. I, I don't know how. How, like, how is that game even close? I don't think I died a single time. Like, oh my God, dude. Some of these lower levels, man. Nice! All right, gold one, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I started the day in bronze and I ended it in gold. So I'm really happy with the progress I was able to make throughout the day. However, on day three, I had my sights set on diamond, which is where the rules and ranked actually have a lot of major changes, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So far, what I could tell you is that bronze and silver didn't have much to offer in terms of competitiveness. Bronze is a cakewalk and there was more competent drafting in silver, but overall I need more of a challenge, which I was hoping to find in gold. It took a few matches that I won by the way, but I finally found a challenge. It's really just this opposing Miko named Wrath with a little dragon emoji. This guy, you know, like, uh, I don't even know how to explain my frustration here. On top of that, my teammate just straight up leaves the game and then things get sketchy. Okay, the fact that this game's close and my teammate's a bot, I think we have a chance. There we go, I slowed them both. No! Spike, go! Yes, dude! Oh my god, let's go! 
go! My next match brings the big friend modifier, and my teammate insta-locks Sponge Frank. It's funny, but I like that the modifiers add some brawler diversity to some of the maps. It's way better than each map having the same meta, where certain brawlers get banned every game and certain brawlers get picked every game. It just keeps things kind of fresh. I didn't think I would like them in a competitive ranked game mode, but I think they're genuinely fun. Sometimes. Like when your teammate becomes an Edgar with 15,000 HP and you legit don't have to do anything except for stand there in the hot zone. But that win brought me within one more win of reaching gold two. It wasn't a very exciting or notable match, but we win and that rewarded me with a beautiful ranked drop. Can we get the dynamite skin, please, 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 come on. Now to be completely honest, going from gold two to gold three wasn't interesting like at all. I won every single match, bringing me to a total of 38 and one with my record so far. And now I'm in gold three, which means I have another ranked drop to open. Dynamite, please. Come on, man. This Mike skin is going to be the death of me, I swear. Okay, so I just need to win four or five more matches in a row and then we'll be able to make it to diamond. And that's when everything's gonna change. Those four or five wins happened faster than the flash running by, and I ended up at 4,400 points. If I have a big enough win here, I'll promote to diamond. Now this game was a headache to say the least. It was an absolute disaster class. Don't pass it back to me. Get away from me. Stop. Why would you run towards me when there's a, get away from me. Are you kidding me? Go away. Why would the Leah, dude, he's a single reason that I just died. Oh my God, this game is so close for no reason, but I was still able to win and 16 points. Are you serious? It's criminal to only get 16 points for a win, but hey, whatever. It's even more criminal to win my next match and only get 66 points, so it's gonna take another win to promote. In that match, I was so locked in that I didn't even say a word. I'm not joking, look at the recording file, but I did manage to win the game. Yeah, all right, let's go, man. Okay, so now we're in diamond. And with that comes a few changes that I alluded to earlier. The matches now have bands, which adds a whole new layer to drafting. And the matches are now best of three, so we'll need to win two of them to secure the points. It's really just the old power league system in full effect again. The matches are gonna take way longer, but it's gonna require a higher level of knowledge about all the brawlers, maps, modes, and modifiers. So with that being said, let's see what diamond has in store for us. Immediately, I make a huge mistake when I take Sandy, a low damage brawler in a match with the big friend modifier. I, I really should have known better here. Yes! Come on, man! Let's go! I fight through all the adversity. 251,000 damage with Sandy. And if that's how all of my diamond games are going to be, this is definitely gonna be rough. But my years of experience playing this five or four button mobile video game has prepared me for this. What I wasn't prepared for was playing versus a Gene with the quick fire modifier enabled. That's a mouthful to say, Jesus. After that match, I learned that I will ban Gene every time the quick fire mod is active. Still overcoming my lack of draft knowledge here, I was able to make it to Diamond 2 and secure another ranked drop. Come on, man, just bling, it's always bling, dude. I was in poor spirits after still not getting the dynamite skin. I was running out of opportunities, but my spirits lifted a little bit when I received an invite to team up with Mayo. After playing solo this whole time, I was really excited to play as a team. I'm not exactly sure how the matchmaking works, but it seems like it prioritizes teams of three to play versus other teams of three. Because in our first match together, the opponents felt way higher skill than what I faced so far. Despite that, we won our first match and I was feeling confident going forward. Then we played a game of heist. Let's just say that it didn't exactly go our way. And I incurred my first loss since day two. My overall win loss record is 52 and two. Ugh, it's so frustrating. This Colette went three and 13 and we lost, bro. We lost. After that, we ended up losing a few more in a row and I decided to go back and play by myself. But still, the losing ways followed me there and I ended up rage quitting on the day. It sucks to not hit diamond three, but hey, that's just how it goes sometimes. 
Day four has zero gameplay. None, zilch, negative, nada. There's nothing. And that's because my friend was getting married in a few days and being the best man, I had some responsibilities and there's some pre-wedding party and there's a bunch of stuff going on and I, I didn't have time to play, okay? Please, please let this one go, okay? Going into day five, I realized that I was running out of time. There was only a few days left in the challenge and in terms of rank, I was nowhere near where I wanted to be. And on top of that, I still didn't have the dynamite skin. And so with that being said, the day didn't start off so good. I, I was setting up to record and I got a legendary drop and I figured I would just open it and be disappointed. And that downward spiral continued because my first match of the day brought me a match versus a brawler that I've never faced yet. Oh. This guy picked Angelo. Uh, I've never played against an Angelo. I haven't played him. I don't know what he does. So this should be an interesting experience. So it turns out he's pretty good. He hits me for 5,000? He just kamikazes into me and killed me. Okay, so Angelo's a pretty good brawler. We're gonna have to deal with that. This game's over. We went on to lose that game and also the next one, which was solely because of my teammates, by the way. Like, it's games like this that I just don't deserve to lose. I had the most kills. I had the most amount of damage. My teammate went one in nine. After that, the day just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Bro, like, like, look at this. Look at this game. My teammate went 0-7 with half the amount of damage that I did. It feels like ever since I hit Diamond and the full draft system was implemented, people's brains just go straight into the blender and no one knows what's going on. Even so, I was still able to carry hard enough to get some wins, bringing me to 5,429 points. Just one more win until Diamond 3. Getting the promotion here would definitely be enough to cleanse myself and stop me from raging at my teammates. The Diamond 3 match started starts off great as we win the first game in such a dominant fashion. Game two, however, swings back in their favor and it's all tied up one to one. And so it all came down to game three, which starts off with them scoring, followed by us scoring to tie it up. Please score, Kevin Pro, come on, just walk it in. Okay, one, one, one minute on the clock. Come on, man, we can do this. My teammate's not playing. We're in the final minute of the last game and he just stops playing. Go, Kevin, Kevin, push it. Go, Kevin. That's what I'm talking about, baby. You gotta know how to use the utilities, boys. Come on, man. 14 and seven, I'm shooting right now. I am shooting. That's what it takes, man. Okay, ranked drop. Now, this is where I get dynamite. I deserve it. I, I deserve it, okay? I, I, come on. I don't feel so good. That victory brings us to 5,510 points. So we just need 500 more. We'll get to 6,000 and that brings us to Mythic. Ooh, scary. So this is where things get a little weird. After I got to Diamond 3, I stopped playing because I had to get ready for a party. I tried to trim my facial hair and cut it way too short. And that's why I look like a child here compared to five seconds ago. And then later on, I came back and I forgot to hit record. And thank God I realized it just when I was one win away from reaching Mythic. So here we are in my Mythic promotion match. That's GG, that's GG. All right, let's go. I'll pad my KD a little bit by killing that guy. And that's gonna be the end of the game. All right, let's go, man. Here we go, Mythic. I honestly didn't think I'd get to Mythic in this whole video. So, uh, ooh, that's actually really clean. Oh, a legendary drop. Okay, we can actually get some good stuff in this. There's a lot of hypercharges I don't have. That's pretty cool. All right, I'll take that. I feel like it's important to note here that day six is occurring two days after the end of the last recording. I wasn't able to play because the actual wedding happened and then the day after that was just really hectic and I also moved my entire setup around. And so here we are in Mythic 1 looking to push it to Legendary. In my first Mythic game, I decided to take Sprout and my heart dropped when I saw my opponent take Edgar with the final pick. I think this guy taking Edgar just absolutely, I think it's over. I think it's over. I think it's over. But maybe I was wrong. Okay, wait a minute. There's actually, there's life. What is our Mandy doing? Okay, there's life for us here. Oh my God, I'm like that, dude. This guy's gotta be so mad. Let's go, dude. 
And let's see what kind of points we're getting. Seven and oh. Did I have fun? Yeah, of course I had fun. I was dunking on these guys. 143 points! That's what I'm talking about, baby! It's nice to make a return to the game after a few days of not playing and get such a big win. Let's go, man. The next few games went a little something like this. I take Larry and Laurie and Bounty and win. I take B and Heist and win. I take Eve and Heist and win. And finally, I take Jesse and Gem Grab and win. And all of those combined brought me up to 6,478 points, just 22 points away from reaching Mythic 2. In that match, I got Heist on Pit Stop with the timed detonation modifier. I feel like B is so OP when the map starts to open up, so I end up taking her. Right away, I noticed something on my team, something I've been chasing after. The Dynamite skin! Dude, I need that before this challenge is over. The match was interesting because at the start, I struggled. But obviously, as the walls went down, I was able to take over. Wow. Well, I mean, that was... <laughs> that went way better than I expected. I'm not going to lie. And game two was just more of the same. Okay, somehow they're down to 4%. I really haven't had to do much this game. My teammates carried me, which is what you love to see. And that win should promote me to Mythic 2. Nice! All right, and we get a rank up drop, which means I'm not asking for a lot. I just want the dynamite skin. That's not, that's not the dynamite skin. Okay, so it looks like I have at most one, two, three more ranked drops to try and get the dynamite skin. And if not, then I don't know what happens, but I need it. I need it. I need it bad. I'd win some, lose some, and lose my mind in the process. Why do I have a dynamite in a game mode where all the walls get destroyed? What, like, you're so useless. Why would you even, why would you ever pick that? You just gave them the ball. They all have super and, um... Why? This dynamite is so bad. He gave them the ball, picked a bad brawler on the map. Like, I mean, six and 16, huh? Nah. If I get another dynamite on my team today, I think I'd, I, I, I quit the game forever. I stopped playing. That's crazy. So yeah, my day was plagued by dynamites and I have no idea why. I said it earlier, but it feels like since the full draft gets activated when you reach diamond, people just take their brain out of their skull and leave it on the table and they just have no idea what they're doing. Overall, the mythic matches didn't feel harder because of my opponent's skills. They felt harder because of my teammates' lack of skill. If you get good teammates though, winning is fairly easy. But a wise man once said, Bad players can throw way harder than the best players can carry, and that's just how it is in this game. The silver lining here is that whenever I lost a match, I wasn't losing a ton of points, so I was quickly able to recover and get to the point where I was one game from promoting to Mythic 3. But again, it feels like some people just don't look at the modifier because this person took Rico as the first pick. It's on split, and that's a great pick, and it makes sense. But with the time detonation modifier, it does not make sense. As you could imagine, we lost the match. And in turn, I ended up losing the most amount of points that I've lost from a single match yet. It feels like no one's paying attention to the modifiers. Minus 104? At this point, I was in shambles. I was consistently playing so good, but struggled to get the wins. Like, look at this. I'm doing everything, dude. I have so many kills. 14 and seven, get me some help. But all that anger, all that rage built up inside of me had to come loose soon. And then it did, because in this next match, I went nuclear. There it is, boys. Come on, let's go, man. That's actually a hard fought battle. I love that. Such a good... 20 and 10, I'm shooting, dude. I am shooting. Give me my flames, baby. And so after one more masterclass of a match and 143 points later, I was one win away from promoting to Mythic 3. But there was a problem. There's always a problem. I continued to have interesting teammates like this guy. We're not looking at the modifiers, so we're not looking at the modifiers today. We see the walls are gonna be destroyed and we're playing tick. Okay, yup. Bro, I can't raise this baby alone. I'm the only one shooting. And this guy. Okay, we're staying in, in Mythic today, I guess, boy. And again, as you could imagine, I started to lose my marbles. I can't. God, man.
This is it, day seven. I'm starting off at 6,828 points with the end goal being to get at least to legendary. I'm hoping because yesterday ended in a fit of rage, but today started off really good. Honestly, I had a great morning. So let's see what we can do here. My first game of the day was an absolute grueler. A game of hot zone on dueling beetles. Ike needed a mental boost, so I picked Jesse. And well, I'll just let the game speak for itself. Okay, there we go. Love that. Let's go. We'll kill the Griff too. Nice. These guys don't have the wiggles like that. They're not the. Oh my God. Let's go. Oh my God. Let's go. Good kills. Come on. We're getting a lot of kills here. This is good. Kill the Pearl. Nice. Nice. Let's go, man. Yes, dude. How was game two so bad? Like, what went wrong? Either way, we popped off 14 and 7. Let's go, man. All right. So, just one more good win. We're in Mythic 3. I wish there was more to document about this match, but these guys were barely shooting back, and I was able to win with no problems. Nice. Yeah, this guy played really well on my team. Love that. Yes, dude. All right. Mythic 3. Come on, man. Okay. So, we, we get a rank drop, too, which is fantastic. Let's go. Come on. This is one of my last chances to get the Dynamite skin. Please. Come on. Come on! Now it was on to Legendary. I was so close I could taste it. I feel like I get the timed detonation modifier so often it hurts, but I was able to make this sick play, so it's fine. Yes! Oh my god, that was so sick! I thought I threw the game... But we actually just clutched it up crazy right there. Obviously, after that, there was no shot I was going to lose. We get this trade at GG. Nice, let's go. Anyway, this is where things get interesting. Because I queue into a match and I get hot zone on split. Nothing out of the ordinary there. We go on to win the first round and then I notice something about one of my teammates. Wait, I didn't even notice that Owen is one of my friends. He just messaged me and said, didn't see you there. I said, what? And then he, he said, I'm in your game. <laughs> and so I think we're going to duo queue after this, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, that was easy. That was so easy. Wow, wow, wow. Nice, okay, and we're gonna duo queue now, so this is exciting. And yeah, duo queuing with someone made everything infinitely easier. We won our first game together and it wasn't even close. And then we won again, putting me so close to reaching Legendary. After that, we had a hard fought battle on Minecart Madness. Unfortunately, things just didn't go our way, but some divine entity must have blessed me here. Uh, how do we lose that, man? Minus one? So that still kept me within an arm's length of reaching legendary. But what's not going to keep me an arm's length of reaching legendary is Owen dropping this stinker of a match and me losing 86 points. Ha 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 ha. This is super fun stuff here. That's sarcasm in case you guys couldn't tell. Anyway, a quick win on heights wins me my points back. 100 points. That's our get back. So now one more win and then I promote, please. Which brings us to a game of heist on pit stop. I make a gutsy call and I pick barley. He seems pretty underrated on this map, and I love playing him here. All right, this is it. A full legendary lobby and maybe OJ on my way to legendary. If we get this win, I promote. And that's it. I'm just going to get up here and pump the vault. Go, go, go. That's 20% right there, I think. There it is. Yes, dude. Okay, come on. Give me enough points, please. Come on. 13 and 7. I was shooting. Yes! Come on, man! Let's go! Legendary one. I think I could equip that. I think I could equip that legendary and be proud of it. Let's go, man. All right, 135 points. And we get a legendary star drop. What do I want out of this? I don't care. I'm just going to open it. Anything, anything but credits would have been fantastic. But after that, I was informed that Legendary is the bottleneck for most people. It's extremely difficult and takes a super long time to get through. One loss can set you back three or four wins. And honestly, I just didn't have it in me to try and grind it out with what little time I had left in the day. If you'd like to see me do a push through the war zone that's Legendary right now and try to make it to Masters, leave a like and let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.